a number of considerations of self-sins. And it begins with a clear expression, look, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, This know also that in the last days, we're in those days, we're in it today, right now, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Yes, you know those memes and all that Instagram motivation speak? Love yourself. You have to love yourself before you can do anything, accomplish anything. <laughs> well, yeah, see what that's feeding into? You see, you see what the Lord's warning here. He's warning this, this is, you want to hear that. You want to hear language that gives you permission to exalt yourself. And the Lord is saying, in perilous times, in the last days, this is what men will love. They'll be lovers of their own selves. They'll also be covetous. Yes, because they can't get enough. They can't get enough. Nothing will satisfy. So they're always wanting more. They haven't denied self. And the self is like some... It has an appetite that can't be satiated. It's always looking more. And this is what men are like. They're boasters. <laughs> they, they, they want you to believe that, that they're better than they really are. So it's not enough that they have all that they have and that they express all that they have. They want to, they want to exaggerate. They want to add to it. And they want to at least, at the very least, make you aware of how wonderful they are. This is self. This is, this is all self. They're proud, obviously, because they have an inflated sense of their own worth. Blasphemers. They have no sense of reverence to God. They blaspheme as if it's nothing. They think lightly of God. Their entire life is a blasphemy to God who gives them breath every day and they take it back, they take it all and they just throw it back in His face in, in selfish expressions of their own desires, God giving them an ability to live for Him and they won't. It's blasphemy. Disobedient to parents. Yes, this is an expression of your rebellion against God. Disobedience to parents, part of the fifth commandment, is a, is a lack of recognition of authority in your life. And anyone who disobeys their parents tends to be someone who also disobeys God. If you find it easy to disobey your parents, you will find it easy to disobey God. I am sure there are times, of course, if our parents are asking us to do something that God forbids, that's a different scenario altogether. But that's not what we're dealing with. This is normal family relationships, and the person who finds it easy to disobey their parents is someone who disobeys God. They have no time for God. Again, it's all about them. It's all about them. And they won't recognize the divinely given, divinely given, not convenient, divinely given structures and orders of authority in society. They won't recognize them. Why? Because it's about the self. They want to raise it up. They're unthankful. Well, of course they are. Because it doesn't matter how much they have, they're always wanting more. And they can't find gratitude in anything. Gratitude is an expression of goodness, of, of mercy, of grace, of receiving things you don't deserve. But they think they deserve everything and more. This is self. They're unholy. Of course they are, because they live by their own standard. They set their own standard of what it is to, to live life. They have no time for God's standard. Without natural affection, they can't even do the things the beasts do. Natural affection is that, that natural ability to care, to care for your children, to care for your family, to, to care for those that are, are your kith and kin, your community, those who are around you. They don't even have that. They're without natural affection. They, they are, they're, they're so far away from God's proper order that so filled with self that they have no time for anyone else. Truth breakers. You can't they can make a vow and it means tilly squat. It doesn't mean a thing. They can say, I swear in the Bible, their hand on the Word of God, and the next minute, break the very vow that they made before the presence of God and men. They can stand in church and say, till death do us part, and it means nothing. The vow means nothing. Why? Because it's about self. It's about them. It's always about them. It's never about the Lord it's never about others, it's about them. This is self, false accusers. Well, of course they are. They slander other people, makes them look better. Incontinent, they have no control. Of 
course they don't. They don't know discipline at all. They won't hold back their words. They won't hold back their ways. They just do and say whatever they please. They're fierce. They're not gentle. That's the sense of it. They have no gentleness. They're despisers of those that are good. Yes, these people who are selfless, they don't like the selfless. Make them look bad. Traitors, yes, even the causes of loyalty have no time for it again because it's about them. If I, if I give them over and it gets me out of a sticky situation, I'll do it. Heady, that is their head strong. Of course they are. Again, they write rules for themselves. High-minded, full of self, that is. Lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Having a form of God. Oh, here's the amazing thing. They have a form of godliness. They have some expression of religion. These are people who are, who are under some, the guise of some religious activity. But all these things are true of them. And this is the horror. Because in the very multitude that Jesus was speaking these words to, this applied. Everything that we've considered applied to numerous individuals in the multitude that were before Jesus that day. So he says, deny. Let him deny himself. This is the idol that must be rejected. It is self. I need to smash it to pieces. 